In this video, we'll discuss the concept of compound interest and also the special number E. Let's start with simple interest. You might recall that when P dollars are invested at an annual interest rate of R for T years, then the interest earned is I equals PRT. A couple of things to note here. Our interest rate should be expressed as a decimal. So for example, 5% would be written as 0 0.05. And we're always talking about an annual interest rate. So even if we invest our money for, let's say, half a year, then our value of t would be one half, but our r would be the interest rate for the entire year. Another way to think about this is that when we invest those dollars, the amount of money that we have at the end is the amount of money that we had initially, plus the interest that we got. And since there's a p in both of these terms, we can often factor out the p. So the thing to keep in mind is that whenever you collect interest, what you're doing is you're multiplying the money that you had by this quantity, 1 plus RT. So with compound interest, we do this over and over and over and over again. So you start with an initial investment, you earn interest, and then you have a new larger amount of money. And then you earn interest again, which is computed on that new larger amount of money. And then you do it again and you do it again. So remember from the previous slide, Every time we earn interest, we multiply by that factor of 1 plus RT. In this case, with compound interest, because the T value is going to be a fraction of a year in most cases, we're going to earn interest multiple times per year. Instead of calling it T, we call it 1 over N. So N times per year means that the T value is equal to 1 over N. And that means that that factor that we were multiplying by, 1 plus RT, we're going to rewrite as 1 plus R times 1 over N, which is just 1 plus R over N. So that's why this formula is going to look a little bit different. So when we do that, we're going to be multiplying our initial investment, that's this P, by that factor of 1 plus R over N, and we're going to multiply by it a whole bunch of times. So how many times are we going to compound our interest? How many times are we going to earn interest? Well, if t is the number of years that we invest our money, and n is the number of times per year that we get interest, then n times t is the number of times we get interest. So that's why the exponent is n times t. So this is our formula for compound interest. Let's just do a quick example. So if we have $1,000 invested at 6% annual interest, compounded quarterly, what is the investment worth after five years? So again, the formula from the previous slide is a equals p times 1 plus r over n to the nt. So we need to read this problem and figure out what's p, what's r, what's n, and what's t. Well, p is the initial investment of 1,000. r is the annual interest rate, which in this case is 6%, and remember we write that as a decimal, 0 0.06. n is the number of times per year we compound interest. And because we're told that we're compounding interest quarterly, n is going to equal 4. And then t is the number of years that we invest our money, which in this case is 5. So now all we have to do is plug all of these numbers into this formula, and then use our calculator to figure out what the answer is. So we've got 1,000 times 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 4 raised to the 4 times 5. And when we put that in our calculator, that all works out to be 1,346.855, or in other words, $1,346.86. Since we're talking about dollars and cents, we always want to round to two decimal places. You should check this on your own. Make sure that you can enter this in your calculator yourself. The most common mistake that students often have is when you raise that to the 4 times 5, sometimes you forget to put the 4 times 5 in parentheses. So remember that 4 times 5, all of that goes into the exponent. So make sure you don't make that mistake. Okay, let's talk about this special number E. Uh, a good way to understand what's going on with this number E is that we're going to think about investing $1 at 100% interest for one year. So thinking about the previous formula, our P is going to be 1. Our r is 100%, which when we express that as a decimal, is going to be 1. Our t is going to be 1, because we're investing for one year. And it's only the n that's going to change. So that means that our amount is going to work out to be 1 times 1 
plus 1 over n raised to the n. Or in other words, just 1 plus 1 over n to the n. And when we're compounding quarterly, that means n equals 4. And when we plug this into that formula, we end up with 2.44. So at the end of this year, in this hypothetical situation, we would have $2.44. Now if we compound monthly, now n is increased to 12, because there's 12 months in a year. And the general idea of compound interest is the more often you compound, the more money you get. So how much more money will we get if we compound monthly versus quarterly? Plugging the number 12 into our formula, we see that we get a little bit more. We get $2.61, which is a little more than the $0.44 cents that we got previously. But now let's kick it up a notch. Now let's compound hourly. How many hours are in a year? Well, there's 365 days in a year and 24 hours in a day, which works out to be 8,760 hours. So when we plug that value of n into our formula, we might expect to get a whole lot more money. And it turns out that we definitely get more money, but maybe not a lot more money. We get 2.718, just under $2.72. Alright, now let's go crazy. So we want to compound every second. So what's our value of n there? Well, using the fact that we have 8,760 hours in a year, and then 60 minutes in an hour, and 60 seconds in a minute, it turns out that there are 31 million 536,000 seconds in a year. So if we plug that number into our formula, how much more money will we get? Well, it turns out not all that much more than what we got compounding every hour. It's still 2.7182824 something something something. So notice that while it's true that the more often we compound, the more money we get, there seems to be this sort of limiting factor that even if we compound really, really often, every second, every half a second, every millisecond, we're never really going to get more than about $2.72. And it turns out that that number, 2.71828 and so on, is actually an important number from, in mathematics, and we call that number E. And this number is relevant for what we call continuously compounded interest. So the idea is that we're compounding so often, we're compounding every microsecond, say, that we essentially are always compounding interest, continuously compounding interest. And it turns out that the formula simplifies quite nicely in that case. So we don't always continuously compound interest, but when we do, the amount of money that we get is simply equal to p times e to the rt, where e is this weird number, 2.71828 and so on.